In this video, which is part one of the advanced Gantt chart series, we're going to make basically a simple Gantt chart here with the dates, having this line here showing our today line, plus having the names of the people who are responsible of this specific task. So let's start to look at how to do this part. So let's start to look how to create a Gantt chart in Chart.js, and this will be one of the parts of a series there we are going to make a very advanced scan chart so first thing what we need here of course is go to chartjs3.com getting started this specific link here so we can get a boiler template and this link you can find as well in the description box once you're on here scroll down and go and copy this boiler template I'm going to copy this all copy all of this if you want to understand this code make sure you watch this video here that explains it all so then I'll just paste that in there. I'm just going to cut this out and we're going to put that in here. Save, refresh, there we are. So now we have this. What I want to do is, of course, to enlarge the bar chart and then we're going to uh, swap as well the scale. So, first of all, let's enlarge it. Save, refresh, there we are. And now swap these scales because these are the category axes. We want to move them up here and these numbers will be down here. So I'm going to say here in the options, enter, say index axis equals y, comma, save, refresh, there we are. So now we swap this, the next thing that we want to do is we want to convert this into a date. We want to make sure that these are dates. So how do we do that? Well, we go to chartjs.org, this specific website, which is the official chartjs website, and click here on ecosystem. Once you click on ecosystem, we're going to get the date adapter. So I'm going to scroll down here and look for the date adapter. We can see here it's on the list. Click on this. You will just jump onto that section. And then you have here these options here, date FNS or Luxon. In this case, I'll use date FNS because date FNS is uh, only requires one JavaScript file while Luxon requires two JavaScript files. Do not use moments. Moments has been deprecated. The team for moments went to Luxon. So that's very important to know. So you scroll down here. Once we click on this, we're going to grab the date fns uh, file which uh, is named charges adapter date fns bundled minimize javascript file all right so once we are in here we're going to make sure that this is all in there you can save this now refresh of course nothing happens it loads this file but of course we have to convert now the entire scale first of all the x-axis will start at zero or well we don't really need to start at zero what we need to do here we're going to convert it into x-axis and say here our date will be different or we will focus here on uh, let's see what we want to do is uh, type will be time so it's a time scale next one i want to do here is we say the unit and the unit will or sorry not like that of course i'm just getting ahead of myself we use the time object now because we are allowing it with this and then we're going to say here unit equals string value date save that refresh and now of course you don't see anything yet but it does show something but of course this is not correct so let's go and convert this now so I'm going up here and then in here we could say here because these are the categories we could say here plan one two three four five or step one or task one uh, but what I will do is I do it slightly different. I'm going to use an object here or I'm going to use the data structure and data structures are very, very useful. If you don't understand data structures, I have a video about understanding charges, data structures, very useful to know. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this here, just put it like that. Then in here, we're going to say X and this X here, we're going to put in the date. In this case, I'm going to just select a single, uh, single month here where we are currently in, which is October, and let's say October 20, we started, this project will start at October 1, and then, if I do this, we say comma, the Y, and the Y could be, let's say, task 1. Let's hide this, and if I save this now, and refresh, you can see this will work nicely, but of course, the date will start from probably, uh, I guess, the beginning of, of the year, uh, recorded time as you can see here that every one of these are almost a year or eight or eleven months difference so this is starting from 1997 uh, 1970s so we have to make sure that the starting point is changing 
for example to this date. How do we do that? Because you can see here that's this here. I'm going to scroll down. And then in here, I'm just going to say a comma and say the minimum date value will be 2022. One, uh, sorry, uh, 10, that's October the 1st. If I save this, refresh, now we have this. And we have the October, it will hit this October 1st. All right, same here. What I will do is, I want to do this now number two. You can see it moves to number two. But of course, what we want to do is we want to have a Gantt chart. So I'm going to use here another trick. And we could say, for example, we have another comma and then we have the starting and ending date. And let's say this would be on the 8th of October. Now we have like this and you can see here we have starting and the ending is right now the highest value that we have here. And you can see here it gets these timestamps. Don't worry about that. That eventually will, in another uh, part, we'll cover that part. So what I want to do is I want to at least here say the max value and the max value will be 2002, 10, and let's say the end of the month. Save, refresh. So now we have this nice scan chart here. But look at this horrible line here, or at least this borderline is missing something. So what I want to do here is uh, go in here in the data set and we say border skip set on false. And the reason why we do this is because in chart.js, if it's a bar chart, it assumes it to be attached to the very starting point of the scale. And if it's a horizontal, it's on the left side. If it's uh, a vertical, then it's at the bottom. So you can see here now you do the border skip false to remove the skipped border. All right, this works. You can see the task one, task two. What I want to do now is I want to copy this and let's put in a few items in here. I guess five or let's make six items. That should be fine. Two, three, four, five and six. And then of course, what I want to do, I want to have some different dates on here. Six, uh, let's say here or zero nine, this should be 12, 15, and let's make this three as well. And then this one should be 18. And this, let's give it three days. This one should be till 12. This as well, 12. This one will be till 21. And this will be 24. And this one, 30. Save. Refresh. Now we have a nice GAN chart with different schedule, uh, uh, schedules per plan, but of course you note that maybe this should be here, matching a bit more. But oh, anyway, what's going on here is a null. I do see that we have a mistake here. Of course, 0, 06. Save, refresh. All right, so now we have that working and all. That's fine. So what I think would be very useful is to know what is today so we can quickly see. Uh, we should make a line here where we can quickly see what is the date of today or where we are in our schedule. For this, I'm going to use a very uh, useful plugin, which we're going to create our own. So in the options here, just after the options, curly braces, comma, we're going to say plugins. And in this plugin, we can uh, indicate the plugin name. Let's call this our today line. And you can give it anything you want, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to say here today line uh, plugin block. And I'm going to say constant today line equals ID of that, comma. And then when would you like to draw it? If you want to draw the line on top of the data set, our today line should be um, drawn after the data set. If you want the line to be at the back of this data set or this bar, then the today line should be drawn before we draw the data sets. So that's the choice you can make. I will say here after data sets draw, but you could do before if you want it at the back of the item of the bar. So then what I'm going to do here, chart objects, uh, arcs and login options, login options. Then with this, we can start to work on drawing the shape. So what I want to do here, first of course, we need a uh, object destructuring of this chart object. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about here, I have a video that explains that all it's in the description box. Make sure you watch that video as well. It's called uh, understanding chart as yes, object destruction. Very, very important to know. I will not explain what I'm doing here because I have that already covered. So we say data, uh, CTX, the data, we have the chart 
area and then in the chart area and again here if you don't understand the chart area which is very important as well I have a video for that as well understanding chart area in chart chaos top bottom and I'm not sure if you need the left and right but we can just put them in there and finally we can put in the scales and I'll just put in here X and Y just in case so now we have this I want to say ctx.save to save all items before we start to draw in the canvas and then we're going to say here I want to create basically a line starting from here to there and eventually what it would make even sense these uh, dates here should move to the very top we could even remove this as well we'll do later on as well to fine-tune it a bit but what we want to do is if today is 20, uh, 23 if I'm not mistaken or 22 it should highlight this specific line here so we're going to say a ctx dot begin path because we're going to draw a new shape which is basically a line but it should be independent of anything else to avoid any bleeding over of other elements very important so some here have some bleed over meaning other places are also getting the same colors or the same thickness of the line in that case begin path is crucial or essential to use so i'm just doing that to avoid that nothing else is uh, be impacted. So then what I'm going to say here, I want to say ctx dot line width, I want to make a new line or line thickness with of three pixels. Once I have this, what I want to do now is I want to say ctx dot move to and basically we're going to start, you can almost imagine this is like a pencil a drawing on a or starting, we're going to start the pencil to draw. Basically we want to do it some from here above so that will be the, the first point and for that we need the x and y coordinates luckily we can find this quite easily because all we need to know is what is the current date of today so we can just say a new date that's it that will gr grab the official date of today but this of course will not work because i need to use another function in here that's built in in chart yes we'll say whatever this date is convert that into a pixel coordinate so we're going to say yeah, x for the x scale because we are working on the x scale here which, which is moving to the right side how much do how many pixels do we need to move to the right side somewhere here probably so we say yeah, x dot get pixel for value and this is a building chart js function so that's what we have to do a new date will get the current date of today for the y we don't have to use this function but we can get here the top coordinate and the top coordinate is basically the very top here this line and all we need to do now is move down in a straight line to the bottom and to do that we could almost copy this but I will not do that because we have to say yes CTS at line 2 and line 2 is the O here so this is very important this move to is the starting point and then line 2 is the line that we are intending to write and I say intending because it doesn't write yet until we give the official command so we can copy all of this put that in here and then say bottom so once we did that the final thing is to draw the line so we say ctx up stroke and stroke means line because we're working with a canvas and in a canvas we talk about the canvas so we're like painting so if you have a paintbrush you make a line with your paintbrush we call it a paint brush stroke so that's why we have a stroke here in the uh, they use the same term so if i refresh now look at that absolutely phenomenal so what we could do and you could see here probably it is even matching on the time depending on the time zone where you are to to uh i guess we're almost halfway of the day which is correct because it's uh, 9 a.m in the in the morning in my place so so we're almost halfway through the day all right so now we have this what i would like to do is and by the way again if you want to do here before you will see it will just go before here save refresh you can see here now probably because of this transparency you cannot see it well if I make this solid uh, this one is task number six task number six should be solid let's have it this save you see it's like that all right very important so you know these differences after let's put it back to its original state all right we have this here um, we could eventually put some text in here that is very important uh, but what I want to do is just fine-tune it let's fine-tune these things here first and oh what I want to do is maybe instead of this solid line let's make this a dotted line and give it a color so I'm going to say here, ctx 
dot. And I'm going to say uh, stroke style for the color equals, and then we can select a color here. What is the color? You can get any color you want. Uh, well, in this case, I'll just get this nice reddish pinkish color, which is basically uh, all over the page anyway. So we're going to reuse that one there. There we are. So we have this color now. Next thing what I want to have is to make it a dotted line. So we're going to say here, CTX dot, and I'm going to say here, set line dash. Then here we're going to put an array, and this array has two values. First one is how many pixels of solid uh, color, and after that, how many pixels of white space. I will make it six pixels solid, and after that, six pixels white space. If I save this, refresh, there we are, this works. However, as you can see, what is happening, it bleeds over on certain other items here, as this line and that line. I want to avoid that, and I don't know any other alternative except this. So I'm going to copy this, put it in here, and we just force this on a blank. Don't put 0, 0, or, or 6, 0. Don't do that, because sometimes it will not work, or some uh, browser just doesn't work. So we just leave here, we say a blank array. By doing that, the browser reads it again accordingly. There we are. All right, now we have this done. What I think will be very nice is to make this a bit smaller and make them rounded borders. Yeah, so let's do some tiny, of a tiny, uh, uh, I guess, aesthetics. So we're gonna say border radius. Let's make this 10 pixels, comma. Let's save that and let's see how that works, how it looks. There we are. Then what I want to do as well is uh, we can say here, bar percentage to control the thickness of the bar now i just want to make it smaller let's make it half smaller so it will look a bit more nicer so we're going to say 0 0.5 or 50 percent re reduction and well maybe that will be fine once we have more tasks and probably that will be quite decent all right so now we have this part here all done eventually we have, should have like something like an, an arrow here above with today or something like that that looks quite nice let's move the scale to the top so going down here, we're going to say your scale, and then we have the scale position. So I want to say your position equals top. Make sure you have a comma here, save, refresh. There we are. You can see here, I don't even like this, this redundancy of dates that can eventually be fine-tuned by just showing the date structure, but that's all right. Other video for that. Let's remove the tooltip for that. Or let's do remove the tooltip now. Uh, or sorry, not the tooltip. The legend, I'm talking about the legend here, because this legend have no value. Uh, let's see, in the options, and then just here after the scales, you're going to put a new comma, you're going to say plugins, and this is very important, make sure you don't get confused with plugins at the bottom here. This plugins here is related to a new plugin object. This here is the tooltip plugin. So then, when, uh, sorry, not the tooltip, we're going to do the legend, my bad. We say here display false. All right, that works. So now, and this is uh, this might be probably an uh, item as well, is what if we want to indicate something with these bars here? Maybe we want to uh, give them eventually an additional code, let's say completed, pending, delayed, something like that. So I'm going to use some tricks here, and this was another request as well, is how do we put at the very front the names, who is, or which person is assigned to this task? Well, let's do that one. So for this, we're going to use again advanced data structures. So let's do your comma, and I'm going to prepare two. No, nope. all right. Uh, sorry, there was so much background noise. So what we're going to do here is let's say who's assigned to this. We can say here name. Let me just put in here some names, and let's say here in this case, uh, James is assigned to this, and we have some other assignments as well for James. And the next one will be here, and let's put a comma in there, and we're going to say, this is Luna, and then we have another name, uh, David, and then we have Lily, and then we have anyone else, uh, let's say Santiago. All right, so we have these names here now. Save, refresh, but of course these names are not being refreshed reflected here. What we want to do is one of space here. So these names are being assigned to those. So how do we do this and how do we make sure that these names are being shown? 
So let's scroll down here and I'm going to use some tricks around it to make space for our chart. So in here, we're going to say here a layout. I'm going to add up a panning at the very beginning here and maybe we could do an add, add a padding at the very end as well. That's probably uh, something else for later on. And then we're going to say here padding. And then we're going to say here left. And let's put in here maybe 100 pixels in padding. That should be more than sufficient for all the names. Save that. Refresh. Now you can see here the chart is moving away a bit to the right. And you can see here if I use my uh, console log or the inspector element, you can see here we can inspect the element. The canvas is still same, but we have now white space here. And this white space I'm going to use to write or assign a name to those tasks. So what I'm going to do here is in here, let's put it down here. And we're going to say here the following. I want to create a font. So we're going to say a CTX and maybe we could do it in a separate object. That could be as well. So we have them all independent. If we want to do that, in that case, I'll just do it like this. So that would be, so you have them separate. Um, we can say here uh, uh, names or something like that. Assigned tasks. I don't know. I'm just giving, uh, making it up as I go on this one. So I'm going to say a constant assigned task equals ID that comma. And then we're going to say here, when would we like to draw? In this case, it doesn't matter where we are really, or our drawing time would not matter much. Why? It doesn't impact here because layers, this is basically being drawn with layers, what is being first drawn and what will be on top of it. But since this is pure white space, we, it does not matter. But I will just use the after same structure as above. Just going to do that one. So we have that same item here. And what I want to say here is, of course, our block. Constant for the assign. Then we say here a plugin block. All right. So we have this object destructuring again. We can copy this. Although I think we don't even need most of them. Well, probably these two we will need. The others here, the scale probably don't need. Oh, we might need the scale. Sorry. So we will probably need the coordinates of the scale. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to draw the line. So we're going to say here, or not the line, but the text, ctx.font. And first thing what we want to do is we want to make this bold font. So we can say bold. If you don't want it bold, remove it. Don't put it in here. Then you always say here's 12 pixels. And then we say here sun uh, serif as font family, which is the default font family and the default font size in chart.js. But I will make this bold or bolder, so nice, thick. Next, what I want to do is, I want to say a ctx dot fill style for the color. And the fill style for the color, we could get the official color of the bars here, but I think that would be not useful because these colors, I want to later on use a color code like uh, red, yellow, and uh, green as complete, pending, or delayed, something like that. So we should not use that one. Uh, we just use your black color, I guess, for now. That's fine. Next, what I want to do here is I want to say uh, ctx dot fill text to draw the text. And what we want to do here is we need the text. That's number one. So there are basically three values. We need the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So what we will need of our x coordinate here is basically the starting point at this point here but we want to make sure it's matched with the task one so what we could do here basically this one is just like 10 pixels to the right side that's number one so we can just say it 10 pixels but the y here and let me let me just put in here text and later on i will convert this into a variable so don't worry about that but it's just now for this one here, we could use the same structure as what we did here above. However, now we need the index numbers and the index numbers will show here. So we're going to say this, but then we say Y. So get pixel for value. And basically we'll get the index number here. Index zero is this one is this exact height, basically. So we're going to say index zero. If I save this, we should see now something almost matching if you look at it. So what I want to do is I want to make this more matching. How do I do this? I want to say ctx dot text baseline. I think that's probably the issue. We'll put it in the middle. 
Start save. There we are. So now we're exactly in the middle because it was probably on baseline, which is slightly higher. Anyway, now this looks perfect. So we have this here, so this works. So how do we get then the items that we want, which is in here? Because what I need is basically the names who is responsible for the tasks. So I want to grab those. And then we're going to scroll down here back to our item, the assigned task. And what we have here, the data. And how we get here, so this data object is very important because that's basically this point to the data sets in text zero because we only have one data set into the data. And then in here, we have to grab the name object. That's basically what we're going to do now. So to show you this, I'm going to uh, go in here and just do a console log for now. So you know the steps. So we say data dot data sets index zero dot data and then I guess you can say here index zero dot name. If I save this, we should see here the name. Am I correct? Uh, all right, interesting. It doesn't show any name at all. So what I can do is maybe copy this, put it in here, see if we show anything. All right, so there it shows. For some reason, it doesn't show in the console log. That's really interesting. And it's supposed to show. Anyway, doesn't matter. This is the most important for me. We have a validation that it works. So what I want to do now is, of course, loop through this. So this loop, what we can do here is create a very simple for loop. Oh, sorry, not even for loop. A uh, for each loop. Because basically here, you could just grab this part. And we're going to use a for each loop. We will loop through every item itself. So I'm just going to say here, uh, data points or data point comma index. I need both of those. They are both important. So then we're going to make this because this is a callback functionality. So we put an arrow function expression. And then what I will do is I'm going to grab this, cut it out, put it in here. And basically this data point is a shorthand for this part here, but it will loop through every one of these arrays. So if I do data point dot name, we should see every name here and they're all on top of it because we forgot to put in the position or we didn't forgot, we didn't do it yet. This here, remember this one is zero is index zero. This is why index is important. Put it in here, save, refresh, and there we are. So this is, I guess the first part of this series. And I think from now on, we can just go more and more advanced into this series. And we'll cover it in the next video. We're going to look for what we can say here is having the status of these items, if they're done or not, and maybe have here an icon or something with a check mark or something to highlight it. That would be nice.